Hi, this is Heather with Bootleg Legal, and this lesson is about protecting your corporate shield. So, you've decided to become a corporation or to become an LLC, um, and you've done that largely, I assume, to protect your personal assets, right? To make sure that there's a shield. Um, they call it both the corporate shield and the corporate veil in case law. Um, but you want to make sure you've got that shield between your business liabilities and your personal assets. So that if the worst happens with your business, um, that somebody can't pursue collection against your personal assets. Um, so the step number one, obviously, is filing um, the articles of organization, articles of incorporation. Depending on the state, it might be called certificate of incorporation and certificate of organization. Um, every state has slightly different language, but um, you file that with the state. And then you fill out your either bylaws of your corporation or you fill out your um, operating agreement if you're a limited liability company. From there, uh, you maintain corporate formalities. So if you're a corporation, you have your annual shareholder meetings and you fill out your minutes. If you're a limited liability company, you really don't have to do a lot of day-to-day -day or even, I mean, sorry, year-to-year -year corporate maintenance other than maybe filing statements of information every two years in California. I'm not sure what it is in most states. Um, but other than that, you do want to make sure that you don't violate any of the rules that you set forth in your operating agreement. For instance, if you put the rule out there that, or in there, that in order for somebody to, you know, spend $5,000 of the company's resources, they need to get approval of at least two other members or majority approval or even, you know, for large expenditures exceeding, you know, $100,000, you need to get unanimous consent of all of the members. Whatever rules you set up for that and for other things, um, you want to make sure you follow them, right? Um, the more you follow them, the more your business is deemed to be acting as a sort of individual economic unit and not as an extension, um, a personal extension of the owners. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, money. <laughs> this is the probably, the, well it's not probably, it definitely is the biggest one. I've litigated this issue. I have successfully pierced the corporate veil before. And the number one aspect that courts will look at when determining whether to pierce a corporate veil is adequate capitalization. So big phrase, sounds scary. It just means this. Did you keep money in your company? Or did you enough money to meet its obligations as it comes due? Whatever it's loan payments, it's rent payment, um, other obligations, payroll. Or are you writing yourself big checks and you're just basically using the company as a piggy bank and you're draining it as often as there's money in it? Um, which means that when somebody comes after you for money that you owe them as a company, that money's not there, right? Because you kept paying yourself too much. So you have to keep enough money in the company to pay its debts, essentially. Um, so that's the number one factor that courts are going to consider, but they're also going to consider things like commingling. If you commingle your personal funds with your business funds, uh, if you use your personal credit card to pay business expenses, your business credit card to pay personal expenses, um, you just shift money back and forth for no reasons, but not in conjunction with official distributions. Um, many things like that. Um, basically, the court is going to look at fairness. Is it fair that we treat this company as a separate economic unit? Or have they been acting in an unfair manner so that in order to achieve this sort of fairness or equity, that we have to let this party um, come after the personal assets? So this means that if you commit fraud, Fraud in any form is one of the biggest and shortest avenues towards piercing of the corporate veil. Um, but I assume that most of you, since you're taking the time to watch this and learn about the law, that hopefully you're not planning on defrauding any of you, the people you do business with. Um, and so if I were you, I would focus mostly on observing corporate formalities, um, not commingling funds, and keeping enough money in your business as the business obligations become due. And that's it.